नमस्कार आई एम लेफ्टिनेंट डॉक्टर प्रशांत आंबेकर फ्रॉम धर्मपेट एम पी देव मेमोरियल सायन्स कॉलेज नागपूर टुडे आय विल गिव्ह अ स्मॉल टॉक ऑन न्यूटोनियन मेकॅनिक्स वन द आउटलाईन ऑफ माय टॉक इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू दिस लॉज नॅचरल एक्झाम्पल्स डेफिनेशन्स न्यूटन्स लॉज ऑफ मोशन न्यूटन्स फर्स्ट लॉ न्यूटन सेकंड लॉ अँड न्यूटन थर्ड लॉ अँड few limitations of these laws i can discuss so let us begin with the law of inertia that is the first law of newton as you are aware that inertia is the tendency of the body not to change its position so if uh, anything is stationary or in motion it will remain in that particular state unless and until it is acted by some unbalanced force and this is nothing but the law of inertia that is the first law of newton so it is uh, simply we can say that uh, a natural or artificial body changes their position with some force acting on it and hence if you change its position it means suppose a stationary body is changing its position it means it has certain acceleration that particular body having mass m has certain acceleration and therefore newton's uh, formulated this law as f equals to ma a f is the unbalanced force which is acting on that body of mass m and a is its acceleration so the law of inertia is uh, can be stated as in an inertial frame of reference an object either remain at rest or continues to move in a constant speed unless acted upon by any unbalanced force now what is unbalanced force suppose there are two forces working opposite to each other it means an equal in amount so the body will not change its position if one of the force is less the other is a uh, little higher then it may go this way and therefore unbalanced force is important over there now in the second law newton observed that this f equals to ma relation if he saw that the a that means acceleration is again a derivative of uh, velocity and this velocity is again a derivative of displacement so he formulated this law as dp by dt that means f equals to dp by dt where p is the uh, momentum or linear momentum of that body which is nothing but m into v where m is mass and v is velocity so he has directly written the law in this form f is directly proportional to p now he state that the time rate of change of momentum as we have seen here the time rate of change of momentum p that means linear momentum of a body or an object is directly proportional to the unbalanced force applied on it now there is uh, one relation of this uh, sorry example of this uh, inertia if you have a coin uh, uh, put on the paper and the paper is on a glass and you uh, just remove that paper with a certain force instantaneously the uh, coin will drop down into the glass and not go along with that paper so this is the tendency of the body and which is known as inertia okay now if you have seen the first law and second law they have similar kind of relation and therefore uh, the laws can be constructed either way to get the first law of motion and vice versa and also the second law can be represented in the form of first law and therefore the first and second laws of motion are the form of a single law now we will look uh, for the third law so while observing newton has seen that 
there are certain examples in the nature that uh, suppose uh, we can have a balloon uh, full of air and you release its uh, uh, opening from this position then the air will go out in this way as uh, directed by this arrow and at the same time the balloon will go as directed by this arrow that means opposite to that air so why this is so similarly this is letter uh, the rocket principle is also working on the third law so when one body exerts a po force on the second body the second body simultaneously exerts a force on uh, the first body which is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction so the law can be stated as at every action there is an equal and opposite reaction now suppose f12 is the force acting on point 2 or mass 2 from a point 1 or mass 1 and f21 is the force acting on point 1 or mass 1 from the point 2 or mass 2 then f21 is equivalent to minus f21 so hence the action is equals to minus of reaction remember uh, it don't applies to the action and reaction happening in your mind although it does but Newton's mechanics allows only to physical matters and specifically in an inertial frame of reference so uh, these uh, three laws uh, if you have observed it there are some limitations what are those limitations the mass is constant in this case suppose you change the mass then f equals to m a will be that means force will be dependent on two things now acceleration as well as mass so it won't apply there similarly suppose a raindrop falling from cloud it gains uh, its weight as number of molecules are attached to it water molecules rather so the uh, raindrops uh, mass is continuously rising and therefore you cannot apply these laws to that particular thing if you apply this law to the rocket the rocket has a fuel it burns and passes through its nozzles uh, in the form of hot gases so rocket also lose loses its weight as it goes upward so you cannot apply these laws directly to this particular thing similarly if there are relativistic velocities of a particle then also the uh, rest mass and the mass in motion are different and the velocity dependent also therefore you cannot apply these laws on that particular cases so these are the limitations of this laws and uh, i think this is uh, uh, over so thank you